When making your custom scripts or software available to someone else, it's a good idea to make that content as easy to extract and install as possible. You could just create a compressed archive, but then the end user has to manually extract the archive and decide where to place the files. Another option is creating packages such as deeb, .rpm, etc. for the user to install, but then you're more locked into a specific distribution. A solution that I often like to use is to create a self-extracting archive file with a makeself.sh script. This type of archive can be treated as a shell script and will extract itself, running a scripted set of installation tasks when it's executed. The reason this works is that the archive is essentially a binary payload with a script stub at the beginning. This stub handles the archive verification and extraction process and then runs any predefined commands via a script specified at the time the archive is created. This model offers you a lot of flexibility and can be used not only for installing scripts and software but also for things like documentation. The makeself.sh script is itself packaged as a self-extracting archive when you download it. You can extract the script and its support files by running the makeself.run installer with a born compatible shell. You can see from the output that I'm working with version 2.1.5 of makeself.sh for this post. To make things easier, you can install makeself.sh in your home slash bin directory and then make sure that dollar sign home slash bin is in your path environment variable. You need to ensure that makeself.sh and makeself-header.sh are in the directory together unless you're going to specify the location of makeself-header.sh with the dash dash header option. Here's the general usage syntax for makeself.sh. After the options, you need to supply the path and name of the directory that you want to include in the archive. The next argument is the file name of the self-extracting archive that will be created. You can choose any name you want, but for consistency and clarity it's recommended that the file have a .run or .sh file name extension. Next, you can specify a label that will act as a short description of the archive and will be displayed during extraction. The final argument to make self.sh is the name of the script that you want to have run after extraction is complete. In turn, this script can have arguments passed to it that are represented by script underscore args. It's important not to get the arguments to the startup script confused with the arguments to make self.sh. Here are some of the options for use with makeself.sh. You can find a comprehensive list on the makeself.sh webpage, but in my own experience, I'm usually only concerned with the options listed here. In addition to the options passed to makeself.sh when creating the archive, there are options that you can pass to the archive itself to influence what happens during and after the extraction process. Here are some of those options, but again, please have a look at the makeself.sh webpage for a full list. Let's go through a practical example using some of this information. If you had a directory named My Program within your home directory and you wanted to package it, you could create the archive with this command line. Notice that I used bzip2 compression via the dash dash bzip2 option rather than using the default of gzip. I couple this with setting the file name extension to .bz2.run so that the end user will have a way of knowing that I used bzip2 compression. After the compression option, I pass an argument requesting that the my program directory, which contains a simple C program also called my program, be added to the archive. After the file name specification with the .bz2.run extension, we come to the description label for the archive. This can be a string of your choosing and will be displayed with the output from the extraction process. The last argument is the startup script that will be run when the archive is extracted. Here are the contents of my simple startup script which is named post underscore extract dot sh that installs the my program binary and the user's bin directory but only if they have one. Notice that when specifying the startup script I use the path of dot slash which points to the current directory. This is a reference to the directory after the extraction 
not the directory where the script resides when you're creating the archive. Your startup script should be inside the directory that you're adding to the archive. One other thing to note about the startup script is that you will need to set its execute bit before creating the archive. Otherwise, you'll get a permission denied error when the make self header script stub tries to execute the script. Now we're transitioning to the end user viewpoint where the self extracting archive has been downloaded and we're getting ready to run it. You can set the execute bit of the archive and run it directly, or execute it with a born compatible shell the way the makeself.run installer was, for instance, sh space makeself.run. Before we extract the archive, though, let's verify its integrity and have a look at its contents. We can see from the first command that the archive is intact and that there are no errors. The second command shows us that the archive contains three files. The first is the source file myprogram.c, which I left in the archive directory so that I could have the option of giving the user the source code. The next file is the startup script that will be run after extraction. The last file, of course, is the binary that our end user is wanting to install. Let's go ahead and install my program using the execute bit on the archive. Now to test that the installation worked, we can try to run my program. I can see that the program is present and did exactly what I expected it to do. Keep in mind that if tilde slash bin is not in your path variable, you'll have to supply the full path to the my program binary. This has been a quick overview of what makeself.sh can do. I've found it to be a very useful script that is also very dependable and easy to use. Through the use of a startup script, along with a full complement of options, makeself.sh offers you a lot of flexibility when creating installers. You can create this type of self-extracting archive manually, but makeself.sh makes it much easier and adds great features like checksum validation. Please feel free to leave any comments or questions below and have a look at innovationsts.com for other projects, tips, how-tos, and service offerings available from Innovations Technology Solutions. Thanks for watching.